to make a simple parser. This is an extreme explaining tutorial. Albert Einstein said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. My goal was to learn to make parsers and interpreters. I wanted to do it by studying very simple programming languages that I later could extend. My first stop was the Dragon Book, Compiler, Principles, Techniques and Tools. It is 1040 pages long. It covers a lot of things like recursive descent parsers, bottom-up parsers, parse generators like YAC, garbage collection, intermediate code optimization, etc. I was not interested in all of that. I just wanted to make a simple recursive descent parser and make my own simple programming language. As I read the book reviews on the Amazon, one reader said, the most problematic content of this book is about parsing. It gives not much helpful inspection into the very nature of parsing. But parsing was the heart of what I wanted to learn, and I was not keen on reading 1,000 pages. So I labeled this book as not simple enough for my purposes. And I looked for some other starting point. So I came across this book, Crafting Interpreters, by Robert Nystrom. Now this book is 643 pages long. As I read the Amazon reviews, one reader said, On the surface, it's a fantastic feat of technical writing. But when you dig deeper, it has fundamental flaws that ruins the experience. Showing how to generate the code to save typing, this was an unfortunate and unnecessary distraction. While this book introduces the main concepts, it ends up being more how to type what I typed than how to write your own programming language. So I started to read this book and I came past the scanner part. But then when I came to the parsing, Nystrom didn't provide the stepwise code like he did for the scanner part. Instead, he provided the code that generated the code for the parser. That's what the reviewer on the Amazon complained about. And that was a major hurdle for me as well. I was not able to follow along, and I had to abandon Nystrom's book. Also, if you look at the logs, the programming language that Nystrom creates in his book, you see that it is very complex. It is object-oriented programming language. Its functions are first-class citizens. It uses block scope, garbage collection, etc. Not a simple language that I could immediately grasp and understand. So I label this book also as not simple enough. The next stop was a YouTube video, which you can find at this address. It is about recursive descent parsers. It is 29 minutes long, and although it was short, relatively easy to understand, and had some pseudocode, there were not enough concrete instructions on how to build a working parser. So I labeled it as not concrete enough. So none of these three resources was what I was looking for. So I searched more on the internet but didn't find anything that I was satisfied with. So I decided to make my own very simple programming languages and get them to work. Programming languages like C, Python and so on are very complex. Nystrom's LOX is moderately complex, but too complex for my purposes. My own two languages called Pico and Logo are very simple. They are as simple as possible, but not simpler, as Einstein would say. In Pico, you can enter the source code like 2 plus 11 times 4, and the program would scan it, parse it, and then evaluate it. In Logo, you can enter the source code like repeat 3, forward 100 plus turn 90, and the program would scan it, parse it, and then evaluate it. 
making a turtle on the screen go forward 100 pixels to 90 degrees and repeat that three times. Now let's take a look at the usual interpreter process. We start with the source code, scan it and produce an array of tokens. Then you take those tokens, parse them and produce an abstract syntax tree. Then you take that tree and evaluate it and produce a result. Now this result can be anything an integer, a string, a piece of code, instructions to control a robot, an animation, an image or anything else. In fact, it is this wanted result that should govern what programming language you want to create. Now let's take this process and apply it to our simple languages. If we take the Pico language, we start with a source code like 2 plus 11 times 4. We scan that code and produce an array of tokens. Now each token will have two parts, a type and a value. So the first token is number 2. The type is int and the value is 2. The next token is plus. In this case the type and value are the same. Then we have the token with the type int and value 11. Then a token with type and value both set to star. And then token with the type int and value 4. Now we parse those to produce the abstract syntax tree. Here we have an operation plus and on the left hand side it has 2. And on the right hand side it has a subtree. That subtree has the operation star, which we can find here, and on the left hand side it has number 11, and on the right hand side it has the number 4. And then we evaluate this. When we evaluate, we start with the whole abstract tree, and then we evaluate the left hand side. In our case, this subtree is just a leaf with value 2 which evaluates to 2. And on the right hand side this is a subtree whose left tree is a leaf that evaluates to 11 and the right subtree evaluates to 4. And when we evaluate star we evaluate the whole subtree 11 times 4 which is 44. Now we evaluate this tree which is plus 2 and 44 and that evaluates to 46. And that is what we return. OK, let's take a look at Logo, our other language. We start with a source code, for instance, F10 plus T90, which stands for forward 10 pixels and then turn 90 degrees. When we scan this, the first token has type F and the value F. The next token has type int and value 10. And the next token has type plus and value plus. And the next token has type t and value t. And the last token has type int and value 90. Then we parse those tokens and we get the following tree. We have the plus operation and on the left hand side we have a subtree whose head is f. And f has a subtree 10 which is a leaf. On the right hand side we also have a subtree with the head t and that t has a subtree of 90 which is a leaf. Now when we evaluate this we start with the whole subtree and evaluate the left hand side. The left subtree evaluates to the string of forward 10 and the right subtree evaluates to the string turn 90. And when we evaluate those two with a plus sign we get forward 10 followed by turn 90, which is what we return. Let's look at a little more complex example. This case is identical to the previous one, but now we have R2 in front of the rest within brackets. R2 stands for repeat 2. 
Now when we scan this, these are the tokens we get. And then we parse, and this tree is what we get. When we start to evaluate this, we first evaluate the left subtree, which is the leaf 2, that evaluates to 2. The right subtree is exactly the same as in the previous example, and we know that it evaluates to forward 10, turn 90. And when we evaluate this tree, it evaluates to 2 times the right subtree which is forward 10, turn 90, forward 10, turn 90. And that is what we return. OK, now we got a little feeling for our simple languages. How should we implement all this? We should start by specifying our language. We will give some examples of inputs and outputs. We do it by providing some correct statements and some incorrect statements. And then we should write an extended BNF, the grammar of the language. And for instance, for our Pico language, the BNF would look something like this. Now we have to decide the representation of our elements. For our tokens, we will use an object with two properties, a type and a value. A binary tree will be represented as an object with three properties, a head, the left subtree, and the right subtree. A unary tree will be represented as an object with two properties, a head and a subtree. And for a leaf tree, it is enough to just have a property called head. Now the result in Pico language will be a string. Now, if we look at the implementation, we have to choose an implementation language. I have chosen Objective-C. However, you can choose something that you are more familiar with and try to implement what I do in Objective-C in your particular language. Now, when it comes to the user interface, we can either choose a prompt or a graphical user interface. In my case, I have chosen the graphical user interface. And then you should think about how to organize your code. In my case, since I have used an object-oriented programming language, I will use classes. When it comes to the scanner, the parser and the evaluator, I just need some functions and variables. I don't need to instantiate anything. So I will implement them as abstract classes. But when it comes to tokens and trees, they have to be generated during the execution, so they have to be concrete classes. So these are the five classes that I will need. OK, let's stop here. We will continue with the implementation in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.